I'm back again and it has been quite some time since I've last worked on this project, but I'm ready to move on to installing the pistons so we can start assembling the long block. So now I'll start differentially heating the piston. Let's try that. That looks nice and hot. Hey, look at that, it moves like butter. Let's see if I can get this first ring compressed down just enough to fit inside that cylinder. So I went ahead and installed all three of the remaining cylinders, so all four of these are now installed. I installed the other three in much the same way as I did the first one. However, one of them was a bit loose in the case, so I added some sealant to help keep the oil from leaking out. I'm going to load the head on to the top of this thing. So basically this is just going to be an exercise in getting all of these bolts to align as well as the pushrod tubes. So, so far it's looking okay. I'm going to make sure all the pushrod tubes make it into their holes. Some of them already are not quite doing it, so Some of them are, some of them are loose, but I think the looseness is gonna come out once the bolts are a little bit more aligned.
So I installed the other head on the other side and for the first time we can officially say this is now a long block. So this thing is effectively complete from a main engine case perspective. Now all I need to do is install all of the peripherals. Now we're going to try and do a, a startup on it before I install the tins, the fans, and the generator. Won't be able to run it for very long, but it'll allow us to see if the timing and everything is set correctly. All right, next I'm going to be installing the oil cooler. So next we've got to get our spark plug wires in our distributor position correct. So for this, what we're going to do is probably go check those valves again so we can figure out where top dead center is, basically where cylinder number one needs to be firing. And we'll set it so that wherever, whatever position this is at where cylinder one is firing, uh, we want these points to have just opened. And we also then will line up our distributor cap such that cylinder one is fired when this rotor is touching that, uh, that wire in the distributor cap. So let's talk a little bit about how the electronics system works on the ignition system of a VW engine. Now obviously the distributor uh, rotor rotates around moving the spark delivered from the center, which is going to be connected to the coil, to each respective cylinder. But how does it actually generate that high voltage spark? Well, the way it actually works is it has a set of points, which we saw earlier, that open and close as the spark ignition is needed. Now when the points are closed, the, uh, this wire here, which is also connected to this condenser or capacitor, is grounded. So when you have this wire connected to the negative side of the spark coil, and the other side of the spark coil connected to the positive, current starts flowing in this coil. Now the coil is basically a big inductor, so the current will increase in an exponential fashion flowing through this inductor until the resistance of the coil, which is high enough to limit that current, basically stops it from increasing any further. That happens on the order of a couple of amps. Now when the rotor continues to rotate around and we're ready to release that energy in the form of a spark, the contact on the points opens. When the contact opens, all that current, which is running through this, uh, through this inductor, basically has nowhere to go at that point. Now when that, when that current has nowhere to go, an inductor basically operates as a, uh, instantaneously speaking, it operates as a constant current device, so it forces that current to continue flowing until the magnetic field in the core of this in, uh, inductor basically collapses. So what that does is it creates a very, very high voltage at the terminal. Now that voltage initially is what actually ignites the spark going uh, to the spark plug and creates that first burst of spark. Now if you let this high voltage be completely uncontained, all of that energy would be absorbed in a large spark at the points as the points open. Now that will cause pitting on the points and it'll also waste a lot of the spark energy, yielding a less than satisfactory spark. So to combat this, the VW engineers have installed a small capacitor on the order of about 100 uh, nanofarad, high voltage capacitor, which is just is connected directly to the points. Uh, and the other side of this capacitor is connected to the chassis ground. Now what that does is, when the points first open, that high voltage spike from the coil uh, charges this capacitor. The current through this coil basically flows into the capacitor. And you still get a high enough voltage to instantiate a spark, but at the same time, this capacitor gets filled up and can then back discharge through the coil in the opposite direction. This creates an LC circuit, which creates a ringing oscillation that allows that same energy pulse to basically get reused over and over again to generate a prolonged spark that dissipates more energy in the cylinder where we want it rather than in the points where we don't. Uh, I think it's kind of a brilliant solution to extracting as much energy as possible from the opening of the points, uh, although it does generate a fairly uh, large pulse in the RF band that can be uh, annoying to radio operators in the nearby area, but that's beside the point. So I'm going to go ahead and just connect this up. So this has a specified positive that's indicated by the plus symbol on the coil. That's where the current goes into the coil from the battery. Uh, the negative is what's controlled by the points. And this, uh, they were kind enough to put a spade connector on here already. So we're just gonna slip the spade connector onto the coil. Uh, what I'll do is for now, since we're just testing it, I'll probably zip tie the coil to the side of the uh, oil fill riser here. And then uh, we can connect the other side to a battery and then I'll wire up the spark plug wires. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, here goes the first quart. Actually, let's pour this in the right way. The correct way to pour oil is like this, apparently. I've been told. I guess it lets the air get back into the top so you don't get as much like uh, blurping of the oil container. All right, here goes quart number two. And we'll do number three last. So there's number three. 
and number three goes on there. So we've got, theoretically, we're gonna have sparks. So at this point, if I put 12 volts to that and I spray a little fuel into those manifolds or into those uh, heads, it might just fire over.